Hi everyone. We're going to be doing a step one review for the gastrointestinal section of first aid. Um, we're going to be breaking down the review into three different parts. So this is part one of clinical presentations. The first one is a newborn who's presenting with an expulsion of gastric contents, a high AFP that's not covered by the peritoneum. This is gastrocesis. The next one is an expulsion of gastric content that is covered by the peritoneum. This is emphalocele. The next one is someone who presents with abdominal content that protrudes through the umbilical ring. This is usually associated with Down syndrome and hypothyroidism. This is an umbilical hernia. Next one is someone who presents with midline defects, like a holoprosencephaly, a cleft palate, and again, abdominal content protruding, uh, protruding covered by peritoneum. This is trisomy 13 or Patel syndrome. Next one is someone who presents with an enlarged tongue. Their right leg is bigger than their left leg. There's a mass in the flank. And there's abdominal content protruding covered by the peritoneum. This is Beckwith-Weidman syndrome. The right leg being bigger than the left leg is called hemihyperplasia. Next is a newborn that presents with coughing, drooling, choking with the first feed. The nasogastric tube encounters resistance when you try and pass it down. And there's a polyhydramnios in utero. This is a esophageal atresia or a tracheoesophageal fistula. Next one is someone who has bilious emesis, double bubble sign on chest x-ray. It's associated with Down syndrome. This is duodenal atresia. Next one is bilious emesis, triple bubble sign on chest x-ray, and cocaine use. This is jejunal atresia. Next is a, is a newborn that's presenting with non-bilious projectile vomiting, a olive-shaped mass in the abdomen. This is pyloric stenosis. Next is a newborn with respiratory distress absent breath sounds unilaterally, and the heart sounds are heard louder on the right side. This is a diaphragmatic hernia. This is when your abdominal content herniates into your thoracic cavity and shifts the heart to the right side and also compresses your lungs. Next is an infant that, pre that presents with a failure of the process vaginalis to close. Um, this is usually a mass that's lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. This is an indirect inguinal hernia. Next is an elderly male with a weakness of the transversalis fascia and a mass that's medial to the inferior epigastric vessels. This is a direct inguinal hernia. Next is a female that has a mass that occurs below the inguinal ligament. This is a femoral hernia. Next is a patient that presents with salivary gland swelling and pain. Usually they have a past medical history of alcoholism, bulimia, or Sjogren syndrome. This is sialolithiasis. Next is dysphagia to solids and liquids and a bird's beak appearance on chest x-ray. This is achalasia. Next is esophagitis in an AIDS patient. When you examine their esophagus, there's white pseudomembranes. This is candida esophagitis. Next is again an AIDS patient with esophagitis. But when you, when you examine their esophagus now, they have punched out ulcers. This is HSV esophagitis. Next is esophagitis in an AIDS patient. 
and they have large linear ulcers. This is CMV esophagitis. Notice all three of these tend to be more common in AIDS patients. Next is someone who presents with a high BMI, a nighttime cough, and epigastric burning. This is GERD. Next is symmetric narrowing of the esophagus and dysphagia to solids after drinking some kind of toxic chemical. This is an esophageal stricture. Next is someone who presents with dysphagia. It's usually a young patient who has a past medical history of asthma or eczema. This is eosinophilic esophagitis. Next is an elderly patient with bad breath. They're regurgitating food and they have progressive dysphagia. This is Zanker's diverticulum. Next is an infant with blood in the stool, no abdominal pain, and the T99M scan shows ectopic gastric mucosa. This is Meckel's diverticulum. Next is someone who's presenting with acid reflux. They have pain in their fingers when they go out in the cold, and they have tangentasias on their skin. This is Crest syndrome, also called scleroderma. This is the limited form. Next is someone who presents with dysphagia, low hemoglobin, low hematocrit, and a low MCV. This is Palmer Winston syndrome. So this is showing you someone who has iron deficiency anemia based on their blood work, and also the dysphagia along is due to the esophageal webs that they have. Next is epigastric burning, deep ulcerations in the esophagus, and they've recently used either potassium chloride or bisphosphonates. This is pill-induced esophagitis. Next is someone who has a past medical history of either alcoholism or bulimia. They show up with hematemesis, and there's a linear tear in the esophagus. This is mallory Weiss syndrome. Now, the same patient presenting with hematemesis now develops severe chest pain and crepitus on palpation. This is esophageal perforation, also called Borhave syndrome. Next is someone who has hematemesis, bright red blood in the stool, and a past medical history of alcohol use. This is an esophageal varicy. Next, you have a patient that presents with progressive dysphagia, weight loss, and a past medical history of reflux. This is an adenocarcinoma. Next is a patient that presents with progressive dysphagia, weight loss, and they have a past medical history of smoking or alcohol use. This is squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma happens in the upper half of the esophagus usually. Next is someone who has substernal chest pain, dysphagia during the episode, and a negative ECG. This is an esophageal spasm. Next is someone who has pain worse with eating, low hemoglobin, high MCV, a history of type 1 diabetes, and Hashimoto. This is autoimmune gastritis, also called pernicious anemia. The low hemoglobin high MCV tells you that they have a lack of vitamin D. Next, you have someone who has epigastric pain, worse with food, NSAID use, or H. pylori. This is a gastric ulcer or a peptic ulcer. Next is epigastric pain better with food. This is your duodenal ulcer. Next is someone who has epigastric pain. Guarding, rigidity, bloody stool, and air underneath the diaphragm seen on the chest x-ray. 
This is a perforated peptic ulcer. Sometimes they call it a perforated viscous. Next, you have a patient that presents with multiple ulcers, and there's a mass in the pancreas. This is a gastrinoma. Next is you have a patient who has early satiety, weight loss, enlarged supraclavicular lymph nodes, and they're of Asian descent, like South Korea or Chinese. This is gastric cancer. The smoked food that's involved in East Asian cuisine can, make, uh, can increase your risk of gastric cancer. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in our next GI review.